Okay. And <clears throat> was a real estate investor. And let's bring him on. Dave Seymour, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing awesome. Man. I'm doing awesome. Hey, thanks for being on the show today. John, pleasure, man. Pleasure. It's like uh, they, they're digging up all the oldies but goodies. You know, you got me, Dog the Bounty Hunter. I mean, it's so, it's so, <laughs> it's like it's, it's like an archaeology dig these days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> thanks, thanks exactly. for having me. Yeah, Gary. awesome. Cool, so, cool. Thank you. Hey, yeah. So, you, how's how's uh, Boston? How's the weather in Boston right now? Actually, we did all right today. We did all right today. It was a little chilly yesterday, but as soon as it gets up in the 80s. Every Bostonian rips their shirt off and heads for the beach. So we're about 82 <laughs> right now. And we're still we're still in lockdown. I mean, it's still a little crazy around here. But what sunshine and business is good. So I'm, I'm not complaining, yeah. brother. That's for sure. Yeah. When when's your lockdown, uh, when are you guys scheduled to kind of start opening back up and stuff? Oh, man. They, they, <laughs> there's a, Changes every day there's here. A about mon monkeys and a football. And I think we got that going on around here right now. We got, <laughs> we got like four phases. Uh, today was actually phase two, section one of the opening, which means retail <laughs> store. Yeah, oh, dude, retail stores can open. <laughs> they can open. Restaurants can open, but you can only sit outside. Uh, you can get a haircut. This is my COVID haircut that my five-year-old did for me. Not, hey, not, that looks uh, good. Uh, yeah, liar, liar, pants on fire. I, I just went yesterday and got my hair cut. My wife's been cutting mine, and I look like an Amish kid. Yeah, and yeah. I had, like the bowl. She's yeah, like, yeah. YouTube was like awesome showing yeah. her how to cut hair. Yeah. I tell you, man, I tried to find a pair of wall clippers about a month ago. They were out of stock. It was like a, a you know an eight week delivery from Amazon. You'd figure uh, you'd figure Bezos yeah. would have honed in on that you know what i mean but yeah barber <laughs> barber shops are open you can go and get a massage again if you need one um okay. yeah it's it's chaos man it's chaos whoever would have thought it you know what i mean just just nuts yeah. that's that's awesome so well hey um you're obviously you've been on tv you've got a show out there you know like how in the world did you even get started in the real estate business like how did that happen like <laughs> you know we 16 were, years as a firefighter yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, man. We, uh, you know, we talked very briefly before before we started this thing. Um, I'll make it. I'll make it concise so we can we can really get into to, into the real estate components of it. But you know, I'm I'm an immigrant from another country. I I, I emigrated. <laughs> I emigrated from England back in '86, and um, I was 19 years old. And I had a, a very a very traditional upbringing. We'll leave it at that, right? My old man was a heat and air conditioning guy. I'm from London. My mom was a secretary. You know, I was told to work hard. You know, don't cheat. Don't lie. Don't steal. Do the right thing. You know, don't ever ask questions you're not supposed to. And follow the financial plan, right, that was laid out in generations of Englishmen before me. Kind of like, you know, yeah. I'm a working class kid, really, blue collar through and through. Uh, today, you know, I've got a kind of like a blue collar attitude in a white collar world. But anyway, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I came to the States and... Um, I was I was fortunate to um, a friend of mine said to me, you know, police, fire, mailman, teacher, you know, one of those good government jobs. He said, you can never lose one of those, brother. He said, mm -hmm. and everybody gets a pension and you'll be all set for the rest of your life. That's what you want to do. And, you know, I got a little bit of a white knight inside of me. So, you know, I, I, I thought about the police department and I tested and I thought about the fire department and I tested. And it was funny. I got a um, I got a card in the mail um, from Lynn Fire Department, which is just north of Boston here. And, and the day I got the card in the mail from Lynn Fire Department, I also got a card in the mail from Miami PD. Right? Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, okay, move to Miami, you know, and go, <laughs> you know, go go be a cop down there, you know, a little Don Johnson. How you doing? Right? <laughs> uh, You're on the beach. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, fight fires up here, and and I and I took to uh, I took to it like a duck to water, firefighting and paramedicine. You know, I did some some special police work on the side, but that's another story. I worked in the jails. But here's here's the bottom line: How did I get started in real estate? I didn't have a choice. Um, I knew how to work really really hard, but I was a financial illiterate, and I mean that sincerely. I was I was a financial donkey. I knew how to spend money. I didn't know how to manage money. Um, I yep. knew how to work an extra hour for, for overtime, right? 
pray yep. it, the phone would ring for an overtime. And and the truth of the matter, Gary, is, um, you know, I was about 120 hours working every single week between uh, two full-time jobs and a part-time job. Um, and then I was still financially screwed. I had over mm -hmm. about seventy five, eighty thousand dollars in unsecured debt and credit cards. I had a wife, I had a son, I had a mortgage, and uh, I had a whole pile of doo doo caca, and it just wasn't smelling good. And um, yeah. I ended up. Um, <laughs> it's funny, you know. I'm not a I'm not a religious guy, but I'm a man of faith, and and I was losing my house. It was in pre foreclosure, and I remember. Yeah banging on the steering wheel of my truck and I'm screaming at my guy upstairs and I'm like, you know, I've done the right thing. I didn't lie. I didn't cheat. I didn't steal. I did everything that yeah. show. What the hell's going on? You know? And, uh, yeah. there was a commercial on the radio and it was in two, late 2007. And the commercial was uh, teach me foreclosure, a free one and a half hour seminar coming to your neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah. That's how I started, man. I had some construction experience through the fire department, but I ended up in, in seminars. Uh, I did the one and a half hour thing and went to a three day class and, you know, put the last of yeah. the credit available on my wife's credit cards for, for a three day training. And uh, you bought, know, bought myself accountability that day is what I did. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I got to, I got to admit, you know, this, what you just said there was almost like an identical scenario with me. I spent 17 years in the insurance world and it was like overnight, you know, and, and we got to the point where like, we didn't know if I was ever getting paid again. And, you know, I did, I listened to this uh, radio ad and yeah. went to a seminar for some free seminars yeah. and then they sold me into it. And then I started getting there and, you know, I, I did, I had to max out, you know, my wife's credit card for the one seminar just for a yeah. weekend boot camp, and, and that so much financial that like I, I didn't even know about before. Like you, it's amazing. So, you know yeah. what it is? It, it's I've, I've figured this much out in my my few years on this planet. Talk is cheap, right? Yep. Talk is cheap. It is. Uh, I yep. want to be financially independent, and yet nobody does anything different to to try and achieve it. Right? Uh, it doesn't yep. matter whether somebody's starting at ground zero like I was, or whether somebody has you know three, four, five hundred, a half a million, two, three million dollars in the bank. They'll, they'll talk yeah. about having a lot of capital and wanting a really good retirement, and yet they don't do what it takes to establish a good retirement. They talk about having no capital, and I want to be a, you know, a real estate investor, and yet they won't spend the time nor the energy to, to learn the business and learn the fundamentals, but they're more than happy to go watch another episode of BS on Netflix or whatever the case may <laughs> be. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 yeah, it, it, takes, it takes some effort, man. I mean... You know, I've I've been blessed to be on a lot of good stages, and and I I was I did a, an event with Tony Robbins of all people once, right? And we were up nice. in Canada, and one of the sayings that um, meant a lot to me was is that massive passion coupled with massive action is what gets you massive results. You know, a lot of yep. people are looking for a dramatic change. Some people ain't. Some people just want to yep. do small increments. But uh, you know, I was beaten into submission <laughs> rather than you know, skipping down the, skipping down the happy road of real estate. So yeah. Yeah. Everybody each their own way. Right. Or not either way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, no, when I first started out, it sounded like we had a pretty similar background. Uh, I didn't have my own money to get started in real estate. Uh, I couldn't go to banks at that time because I was pretty much, I've been self-employed. You know, I, I lost a bunch of my agents, you know, due to some changes in the healthcare uh, reform. And, you know, I had to go out and search for private money. What, how did you get started? Like with that, did you have money? Did you have, did you were you able to go to a bank? Yeah, did you have, no. you know, I had to go out and find, you know, I couldn't go to my family members and say, Hey, give me money. Cause they didn't have it. Right. So, right. I, re I remember when I started, my FICO score was two and uh, maybe <laughs> three on a really, a really good day. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't a lendable commodity from, from financial yeah. institutions. Right. Um, so for me, when I, when I started at the very beginning, one of the guys who was kind of influential to me said, money is everywhere. Money isn't valuable. Money is actually a devaluing commodity in today's society, right? The longer it sits mm -hmm. still, it just devalues. And yet everybody thinks if I got more money, I'm going to be all set. You need money to make money. All of those, those you yeah. know, ingrained um, you know, philosophies, if you will. Um, to be in a position of broke, is actually powerful 
Uh, Damon yeah. John wrote a book, I think it was called The Power of Being Broke. And um, mm -hmm. I, I understood those concepts. It creates, a, it creates an element of um, like action in somebody, right? To, to, to literally yeah. be with no money. So what I found out was is my, my energy, my, my influence on other people through education became the currency that I could bring to the market. So mm -hmm. I've, I've coached and trained thousands of people across the country and they always say, what should I do first? And I always mm -hmm. say, figure out what your unique talent is and then figure out how to bring it to the marketplace. So for me, I had a couple of things going for me. Obviously, my dynamic good looks was one, but <laughs> I, was, I had some construction experience. I wasn't a very good carpenter. Uh, if you wanted me to do finished carpentry, you needed to give me a, a, a caulking gun and, and some caulking because I was going to need to fill the cracks. Caulk out. fixes everything, doesn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I, but I knew some some stuff, right? Um, and yeah. then secondly, for me, I, I had an advantage, which was the fire department, right? So mm -hmm. I would use that everywhere I could. Hey, you know, Dave, I'm a firefighter. If I can, and I'd be talking to other investors, right? Other, uh, you know, maybe potential lenders. You know, people believed in um, they believed in the consistencies of the message that I delivered. Firefighter, construction. Yeah. I can help you. You help me, and and just begin to attract people towards me who could could help me along the way. And um, I never I never gave up on that journey. Um, as silly as it sounds, you know, a guy says to me one time, the truth always comes out at three o'clock in the morning. It's the thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night, right? And he said, and if it's yeah. three o'clock in the morning, look in the mirror and start to practice, right? And practice who it is that you're, you're, you're turning into. Yeah. I did that. And the very first um, private lender I got was, uh, was actually a lieutenant. He's now a chief in the fire department. And uh, I borrowed $35,000 giving him a guaranteed $5,000 return. And the 35 grand was just for some construction money on a project. And I knew yeah. that the project was going to get to fruition and be sold. So I think I said to him, I'll pay you back in eight weeks. And I paid him back in six. Uh, and he made five grand in six weeks on 35 grand. And then he said the magic words, Gary, that we all want to hear. Listen, if you ever need money, you call me first. <laughs> and if I don't I have it, right? And if I don't yeah. have it, I know other guys who do. And it, and it kind of yeah. started there. But I, I, I had to know what the heck I was talking about. You know, yep. the Wally who stands there and goes, I think I got a good deal. Uh, and I think if you lend me 20 grand, I think I could maybe give you 22. Doesn't, don't think anything. Know your numbers. Be proficient. Yeah. And then you, uh, you know, you, you'll begin to attract people with capital. And today I'm a I'm a lender, so you know I've gone I've gone full circle, if you will. That's awesome. Yeah. So very cool. So what what um, you know I mean there's always that motivation, right? The, to get started, to keep going, and you kind of hit a little bit on it there yourself. But what 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 motivates you every single day, and what's that drive to keep you going? To you know like it's amazing. Like I can tell you mine, but I. Every day I get up and I, you know, people ask me like, why do you get up so early or why do you work so late or, you know, why are you honestly doing this? Like I'm, I can work constantly and people, you know, so that's like my drive because I want to continue to keep getting better and better. So yeah. what's that for you? <laughs> that wasn't on your list of questions. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Look, dude, here's, here's, here's the, here's the 411, right? It gets yeah. down to, to, to somebody's DNA at the end of the day. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in, in, you know, the law of attraction. I believe that like attracts like. I believe that, uh, you know, every deposit I make today is for a, for a, a withdrawal tomorrow, right? How do you, how do you yep. get a better life? Well, do something different today, you donkey, and you'll get a different result tomorrow, right? So for me, yeah. what, what, what drives me is, is uh, I'm competitive. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I have a touch of FOMO in me, fear of missing out. So that, 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 yeah. that keeps me sharp. That keeps me current. Um, I've, I've always been somebody who's, who's in perpetual, right? I'm in motion. Um, I'm either all on or I'm not. 
And when I'm not yeah. on, I, I want to be relaxing and chilling with my wife and my, my boys and, and doing my own thing. Um, today, one of the biggest, biggest drives for me is to be able to bring value to people around me. And what okay. I mean by that is, is you know, in my, in my business today, um, we bring, you know, rates of returns to investors, right? Um, I yep. get a lot of pride when I get an email that says, man, I'm so glad that I invested with you guys at XYZ. You know, I didn't get my, yep. you know, what's handed to me in the stock market. I'm so grateful that I've got a protected, secured and insured investments. Um, I take yep. pride in that because... I've learned that the more that I, I put out is what I get in return, right? It's a case of giving. A lot of people live this yeah. philosophy of, you know, what's in it for me? Um, I like the idea of what's in it for you because I found mm -hmm. out this and I found out, you know, through, through being hurt and I found out through being rewarded is that if I put other people ahead of me, if I think about servicing somebody else before myself, um, it comes back to me two, three, four, fivefold. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of sharks out there, brother. There's a lot of, there's a yeah. lot of sharks. There's a lot of bullshit out there. People, you know, again, talk is cheap, right? So mm -hmm. I've kind of, I've got a, a, like a dual, a dual edged sword, if you will, going in the sense that, um, when I get up, I want to be proficient and it's one of my, my, my faults, not my strengths is to be organized. Right. Um, I like what is it? Uh, not ready, aim, fire. I'm ready, fire, aim. You know what I mean? Like in the past, my, my yeah. business, right? My business philosophy was make a mess and learn how to monetize it along the way. And um, so and that's the best, right? Isn't it? I like yeah. the challenge. Just taking action, getting it going. You know, yeah, get, getting going, getting in action. Yeah. I, um, you know, I've had businesses that you know haven't performed to the standard that I wanted them, um, but I've had some businesses that have just you know, rocket it to the, to the fifth dimension. Um, and at yeah. the end, at the end of the day, man, here's, here's one thing I've, I have learned is if you're, if you're doing what you want to do and if you mm -hmm. really enjoy what it is, if you're passionate about it and I hate to be freaking corny, but it doesn't feel like work. You know what it, I mean? It, it, doesn't, it yep. doesn't feel Absolutely. like work, dude. You know, whether yep. it's a little single family property that we've, you know, lipstick on a pig or a, a full gut rehab. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter, man. You, you step back from that and you go, yeah, look at that yep. little thing right there. You know, <laughs> that's a nice little house. You know, and then somebody, exactly, will, yes. you know, it's gratification. It's a sense of accomplishment. Um, yep. I, like, I, like to, I like to be around people who, who, value, um, who value what we bring. And then at the same time, I like to be around people who are excited to be moving forward, right? Rather than the complacencies. Yes. You know what I yep. mean? Yeah. I yeah, want oh, to, so you, exactly. You know, you here's, here's something yeah. that's critical for me. I don't want to be the smartest person in any room, dude. Yep. I don't, Gary. I, I, I you know, I want to be, I want to be stimulated. Um, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm in my early fifties, but I got a, I got an eight year old, a 10 year old and a 24 year old. You know what I mean? I got, I got some stuff yeah. to do here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <laughs> it's uh, competition gets me going. Um, performance gets me going. Um, I like the challenge. I love the challenge. Yeah. I love the challenge of somebody who says you can't. Because as soon as somebody tells me I can't, in my head, oh, I, I know I can. Now it's That's on. like my biggest my biggest motivator. Because I, I get people that will say, oh, you can't do that. Or you can't, you know. BS, like yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I had realtors when I first got in the business say, "Oh, you can't do that," and like yeah. I turned around and I'm like, "I'm doing it," like just yeah. to prove you wrong in a sense. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard it so many times in my life. You can't do that. You know why people? You know? Here's, here's, here's what I've figured out, dude. And again, I could be wrong. I'm always ready to be educated, right? But one of the things I figured out is this: is a lot of people who say or use the word "can't," it's a fear-based word, right? Yeah. Because people project themselves into different circumstances, different scenarios, different contracts, yep. different whatever. And because something is unknown to them, the answer is yeah. I can't. I, I, like attorneys, God bless them, right? Uh, you can't do yeah. that. It's illegal. Really? No, it's not illegal. You just don't know how to do it. Therefore, yeah. your default is can't. Um, yeah. 
you know, I, I've had, I'm, I'm going through some challenges on a contract and, and you know, you're in the business long enough, you're going to have challenges. I got four attorneys on it. Three of them say I can and one of them says I can't. So who's yeah. right? You know, who's right? Me. Yeah. If I say I can't, I'm right. If I say I can, I'm right. Either way, I'm right. Right. It's yep. a choice. So, Absolutely. You know, those, those, uh, yeah, those moments of challenge, man. I, I thrive off of that. I get a, I get a real kick out of that. Go on. I dare you to tell me I can't do something. <laughs> I love it when someone says that. Like it, yeah. I just like I'm gone. So yeah. So hey, yeah. Today, I interviewed my group of people. You know, my my audience, right? Yeah. And one of the biggest questions that came up was, "How do I get my own TV show?" All right. <laughs> so how? I mean, so how did you start off in the, in the get into flipping Boston? How did that all come about? Yeah. First of all, you don't want a TV show. Everybody thinks they want one, right? <laughs> Everybody wants their, their 30 seconds of fame. But um, I, was, um, I was very blessed. I told you I was part of the, the, you know, the education space. I came through as a student. And, and you know as much as anybody else, and I'm sure everybody watching this knows, as soon as you put your name and information in somewhere, all of a sudden, you know, Google does its magic with search engine optimization. And all of a sudden on the the side of your screen are all these, all these different, you know, places you can go. Well, you know, yeah. I was, I, I was sucked into that as well, but um, I was able to um, be a part of the education space and being in that education space, you also end up rubbing elbows with some of the, the top marketers in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Online marketers, um, Gary V, uh, you know, there's, there's just, there's, there's so many of them, right? And um, there was one guy, what the heck was his name? I can see his face. I can't remember his name. But anyway, he sent me a link. I, I had done some MCing and a little bit of speaking, a little bit of platform sales. Um, yeah. And um, this guy sent me a link. And basically, the link was to um, reach out to a production company in New York who wanted to, you know, do a show. They were looking for some, some, some talent. And uh, this was in 2000 and late nine, 10, somewhere around there, I think. Um, yeah. And it was when nobody wanted to know anything. If you'd have looked at all the HGTV silliness in 2007 and eight, there, there yeah. was nothing there, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I downloaded a, a vanilla online application. And I knew at that moment in time, because I've been around a lot of marketers, that if you can't separate yourself from everybody else, if you can't rise above the noise, you know, stand a chance. So you got a vanilla application, name a company, how many people in your company, how many houses, right? <laughs> right? How do, you, how do you make that elevate? Well, yeah. I find that profanity will grab people's attention. So what I yep. did was, was I loaded my application with profanity. Name of your <laughs> company, go F yourself, LLC, right? And then yeah. I just kept on going and I, and I loaded it uh, with the, the end caption, tell us about your company. And I was still a firefighter at the time. And basically, I think it said something along the lines of, don't waste my effing time. Don't call me. Get on a plane, you donkey. Come to Boston. Come see how Dave does it. He's the real estate. Uh, when everybody else goes rushing out, I go rushing in just like I do in the effing fire department. Uh, just bring <laughs> the cameras, bring a large budget, bring me something to eat. Let's go to work. You know, it was something like that. <laughs> And, and what have I got to lose, man? And I pressed the send button, and I swear to, swear to God, it was maybe 20 minutes. I see yeah. on my caller ID, 212 area code, New York, calling me. Yeah. So I pick up the phone. I go, I thought I told you not to call me. And I got the phone. <laughs> and I'm like, Please call me. <laughs> yeah, straight up. And, uh, yeah, they called back, and the kid was laughing his ass off. And he's like, <laughs> He's like, you're either a lunatic or you're a genius. I go, I'm a little bit of both, young man. When are you coming to film the show? And uh, that's <laughs> kind of how it started. We were supposed to do um, a couple of... Now, too, most people be scared of that. What do you got to lose, right? Yeah. What do you got to lose? They say, who's this idiot swearing? Or they say, who's this guy swearing? What do you got to lose, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, marketing is is being different, man. It's 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 separating yourself. It's humor. It's it's uh, truth. It's authenticity. It's all of those things, right? And um, yeah. I really am. I really do use way too much profanity. I mean, it's it's part of it's part of my working class firefighter DNA. 
Um, I've done very well this morning. I'm quite proud of myself. But um, you know, it's uh, they came out. They did like a little a little blurby piece. They did a, a little bit of a thing, and I didn't really have a strong partnership with the Greek back then. My ex partner Pete. Um, but we shot some stuff, and you know, A and E Network saw it, sent a note back to um, back to the production company, and they said that big Englishman looks like he could get kind of get kind of pissed. We would <laughs> mind seeing more of that, and then you know, yeah. and then it was like big bad day, you know, and then Greek <laughs> the Greek designer, and you start you know you start making a silly show. Uh, it's not yeah. fun having a camera up your ass 24-7. It slows down business. Uh, I wasn't making any Kardashian money. You know what I mean? No kadunk kadunk yeah. money over here. Nobody wants to see my rear end. So, you know, we weren't, <laughs> we weren't making crazy money. But the upside of it was obviously the, the, the fact that today, and I don't say this to, for, for ego, I say it for fact. Today, because of that show, I can reach out and open doors anywhere in this country the, the, yeah. the, a lot of people would have challenges doing, you know, um, Absolutely. I can, I can, I can set meetings with, with powerful people who can influence and, and in return, I bring them value. So, you know, God is good. Yeah. That was a blessing. It wasn't a curse, but that's how we ended yeah. up getting the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I do kind of envy you though, Dave, cause I did have, I actually had a, due to my, my social media marketing, yeah. I actually had a film crew out of Hollywood okay. said, Hey, you you know, they actually came to Columbus, Ohio. We filmed an episode. It was, well, they filmed what they called it a sizzle reel, right? Yeah, you know, like a little. Reel. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they, you know, they went. But I got to tell you, like, it would have took like two days to do the work that we need to do on this property. It took like two weeks just yeah. to do this, like, the yeah. little sizzle reel. Yeah. And I was, I was like, wow, this is like, stop. Let's redo it. Stop. Let's redo it. And it was amazing, like how much longer it actually took just to put flooring down, you know? Yeah, if you look at, if you look at uh, HGTV, they've got, a, they've got a formula, okay? They really yeah. do. Uh, if you're a real house renovator, we all know with maturity that you cannot do that amount of work in a half an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, and, uh, yeah. And even, even the numbers and the profits that they put on there, you know, the majority yeah. of them are garbage. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's infotainment is what it is. Yep. And, you yeah. know, if you want to be an infotainer, that's one thing. But if you want to be a real real estate investor, well, that's something different. Totally you know, different. You know yeah. it's a different ball game. And, you know, with my, my, my ex-partner, Pete, uh, he was a stickler on the numbers and, and the financials. So, you know, what you saw with us was reality. But that was also a setback because, you know, they wanted 100 episodes over a four-year period. Well, it's a little bit yep. different when you really rehab houses. Instead yeah, of hanging, exactly. hanging something dirty on a wall and calling it a stink house. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, so. That's just insulting the intelligence. But yeah. I, I, I'm sorry you didn't make the big time, baby. Hey, that's that's all right. You know, I mean, hey, but uh, I won't turn any offers down at the moment. So okay. Good luck. <laughs> I guess I need to start cussing more at these people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta find the inner the inner self. My little eight year old calls it is in a bin. He lets his inner bed. No, yeah. yeah. Let the inside yeah. out, man. Be vulnerable. Who knows? That's awesome. I, you know, my son, so we made it, it was like, we caught, it was like the name was Two and a Half Rehabbers. Okay. And it was like a spinoff in a sense. And so it, it really featured my little son. Okay. And he was like, the, you know, we showed the video to everybody. And of course, it was on YouTube. And all his buddies at school thought he was like the big wig, you know, like it was pretty awesome just seeing him on yeah. that. So yeah. well worth yeah. it, you know. Yeah, they've got a formula. Gary, they really do, man. I mean, you need a, a, a pretty lady. You need a somewhat have decent looking dude today. If they're a couple, it's even better, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a little marital spat. I mean, you know, yeah. it's um, the, the, the uh, vice, uh, vice president or executive, whatever a position was, we, had, uh, we were at a lunch in New York, and this was when Duck Dynasty was playing. Remember Duck Dynasty yeah. the with the beard? Yep. Um, yep. Very bizarre show, but it was a hit, right? And we're talking, yeah. and she said to me, she said, what America wants is what's called popcorn television. And I said, what is that? Mm -hmm. She said, America doesn't want to be challenged. America doesn't want to think. America wants yeah. to be able to start a show, go get a bag of popcorn, come back, and not miss anything of any value. Yeah. Kind of, which is kind of sad. Yeah, that is. It's kind of sad. Is that it? Is, nope. it, is it moronic? Is, is that? Yeah. Is that 
you know, yeah. is that the deliverables today? You know, uh, or does society need to be or want to be challenged? Or, you know, there's a saying in England, it's called being mocus. Mocus means you're just like, hey, every day. You know? Um, yeah. you know, I choose I choose not to be mocus. The show was yep. fun. You know, I bought it my flavor. Pete bought it his flavor. We did yep. okay. You know, it wasn't like, oh, my God, do you remember those episodes? Nobody says that. You know what I mean? And that's fine. <laughs> You know, ego stands for he's got out. I'm not in it for an ego trip, you know. Be of service, do some good work, and we got a, you know, we got a chance to do some good stuff off of it. So, yeah. 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 So, all right. Well, that's good. It's good information. So, you've actually got this nice website to, um, called uh, Freedom Venture, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Freedom yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, tell us about that. You, you, you're. Yeah. essentially looking for investors on this, or what? Sure. What's the situation? Sure. Oh, look, there's. If you if you do this business rather than talk about it, um, there's there's a progression that that, that happens. Um, I don't know if it's by default. You know, some people stay in the single family, uh, you know, buy fix and flip business. Some people get a couple of rentals underneath them. Some people yeah. transition over to being lenders. Um, what's happened in my career is this: is again because of the amount of people that I can reach out to. Um, it, it, it's taken a, um, a trajectory today that I'm, I'm really excited about. You know, today a single family home, buy, fix, and flip, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollar payday. And I don't mean this to be flip, but it flip, I mean, it's a play on words. I don't mean this to be flippant, but it, it doesn't get my heart rate up. You know, I can, yeah. I, can I can do that with my eyes closed. Uh, you know, I can manage my own portfolio of 20 to 50 units, long distance. Yeah. Cash flow doesn't get my heart rate up. Um, I'll tell you the story briefly that, that led to Freedom Venture Investments being where it is today was I was approached by a hard money lending company uh, towards the end of last year, um, mm -hmm. February, we started solidifying and they said, hey, Dave, why don't you, why don't you bring a hard money lending um, business, you know, to the marketplace, you know? Yeah. Hard money has never really been branded. You know, it's always mm -hmm. one, two, three capital and four, five, seven capital. And I've yeah. got the best rates ever. And at the end of the day, everybody's got the same rates. It's about customer service. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we opened up a, um, a branch office and we were about to launch. We had about 15 million um, in loans coming through, through the pipe, ready to come okay. and fund our investors' deals. Um, and what happened was COVID. And COVID shut down what's called the non-QM market. Um, yep. It's the non-owner occupied lending market space. And in three days, I was out of business. Three days, yep. gone. Business was over, kind of like your insurance, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I had, uh, I had quite a large investment in building this business. We had seven, eight loan origination offices on both sides of the state. And... Um, the business was over because there was no way of taking the notes that we created and selling them to Wall Street because Wall Street wasn't buying them. So game over. Yeah. So, you know, you, you step back and you can either cry or you can reinvent. And mm -hmm. what I figured out in that moment was, was kind of like a moment of clarity and really not that much of a genius moment, but for me it kind of was. And what it was was he or she who controls the capital is going to win the game. Yes. I was allowing Wall Street really to control the capital because the line of credit we lent from needed to be sold to Wall Street to be able to keep the line of credit going. Yeah. So then if I want to control the capital, then how much capital do I want to control and what can I do with the capital? That's the answer, right? That's the questions. Yeah. God is good. Timing is good. A friend of mine um, in the uh, Gulf Coast region, um, reached out to me uh, without knowing what I was going through in, um, you know, March. We, we'd had a couple of conversations, but I was on this journey. And he had been a private equity fund manager for about the past 15 years of his career. And what a private equity fund manager does is they raise capital. It's called a, a PPM, a private placement memorandum uh, yep. for what are called accredited investors. Um, I'm not going to educate you on credit investors. Google it. You'll, you'll figure it out. 
Um, but what he was able to do was, was during the course of his career, probably raise anywhere between 140, 150 million. What he did in the Gulf Coast region was raise that capital, deploy it, raise it, deploy it, raise it, deploy it, and turn that money over and over with his expertise in um, new construction as well as some multifamily. And what's mm -hmm. happened is this, is that three amigos have got together uh, my partner in the Gulf Coast, a young guy by the name of Eric, my younger partner, uh, is 24 years old and has the skill set with the, with a computer, the internet systems process software, which supports all of the automation and uh, smoothness of operations. And then yeah. myself, my ability to reach out nationwide yeah. and show this opportunity. So what's happened is this, is Freedom Venture Investments um, is is now a management company. It has a management company within it. And what we do is, is we're managing a fund of $100 million. We anticipate that fund being fully funded around September 30th, raising $100 wow. million, and then also deploying that capital. It's okay yeah. to raise money. It doesn't mean anything if you can't put it out in the marketplace. Yeah. And what we target is the Gulf Coast region of Florida, uh, Tampa, up towards maybe up into Orlando, up in that area, uh, down into um, St. Petersburg. All of that market there is an incredible market for growth. And what's happened is, yeah. is, is the perfect storm has arisen with COVID. And if you follow a lot of the data that's out there right now, um, inner city is going to diminish. People don't want that crowded environment anymore. And there's, yep. there's this mass exodus to these markets. Carolina markets, the Florida markets, uh, still parts of Texas are hot. And what it does is it creates an opportunity to get a higher rate of return with capital than what most other vehicles are showing in the marketplace. Um, yeah. it, it really is an incredible time for us. Uh, we're driving a lot of investors to Freedom Venture Investments, which is our, our, our front door. Uh, anybody mm -hmm. interested in more information can go there and they can get that information. And then what we do is, is we pay returns to our investors. Our investors are paid a return up to a certain amount. So they always get paid first. And then the fund yeah. that shares in any profits after that. Uh, we haven't finalized our private placement memorandum because we're launching. We're shooting for uh, July 1. Just wait for all the legal documents to be finished. But, uh, okay. you know, it's, 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 another, it's another world, man. It's another incredible yeah. opportunity in real estate. And it's so exciting yep. for me because I know what I can do for these investors who have just got brutalized in the stock market, right? <laughs> yes. And I mean that sincerely, brutalized. I mean, you know, we used to joke about 401ks being 201ks. Well, now they're 101ks, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, yep. So, you know, sticks and bricks has always been my wheelhouse. I don't care if it's a 200-unit uh, apartment complex or whether it's a, you know, a little 1,500 you know, 1,500 square feet, three bed, two bath, bread and butter house in the neighborhoods where they yep. sell fast, right? It's yeah. a hard asset, man. And a hard yeah. asset pays a hard return. So that's where we're at, man. That's, that's the journey we're on. Um, and with my partner's proven um, track record in the, in the Florida uh, Gulf Coast region, you know, we can mm -hmm. just piggyback right on, right on top of that. We just step into it, yeah. pour some gasoline on it, and, 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 and get it on. Yeah, Tampa, right. Tampa Bay is nice. I was actually just uh, down in Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa Bay doing an event. Yeah, uh, speaking of, and I was on stage, and yeah. uh, I actually had some people back in Ohio said, "Hey, I've got a property down there for yeah. sale. You know, I'm wanting to get rid of, it and I wouldn't yeah. look at you know." And so I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there still. Yeah, so. multifamily is um, is is really the the focus for us. Um, you know, I get people sending me deals that have retail in it. Uh, you know, I'm blessed that I wasn't in the retail space because, as we know, that that's been decimated because of COVID. Uh, yeah. Retail is 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 you know, some people look at it like an opportunity. They say take retail, convert it to to residential, um, but yeah. that takes time. If I'm an investor yeah. and I'm putting in a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars into a fund, I don't want to wait one year, two years for yeah. for a return. I want to get mm -hmm. paid quarterly. You know. Yeah. So multifamily um, gives a, a fund the ability to pay quarterly and consistently based off of based off of the income that it makes. You know, it's yeah. it's an income. It's a business. A multifamily asset is a business 
all on its own. Yeah. It has income, it has expenses, um, it has overhead, you know, it has the ability to develop and grow and be better. If it's badly managed, it's a huge opportunity for us as fund managers to come in and fix those yeah. challenges. So, you know, I uh, I love this world, man. It's it, This gets my heart rate up, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, 10 units, 12 units, eh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, a hundred. Oh, hey, now, 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 we're, now we're doing something. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm blessed, man. I, I, I got to say this out loud and then bless myself at the same time. But, you know, I'm in a position <laughs> today where I've, I've never lost a dime in real estate uh, because yeah. I've, I've always been very conservative. I've, I've passed on a hundred mm -hmm. deals before I do one. Uh, and that, yeah. that's a message for anybody. You know, if you try and squeeze, squeeze a real estate trade. I know there's a dollar in there somewhere, you know, if that's how you're doing business, you, you could find yourself having some challenges. I, I can't tell you how many deals I've had to walk away with. I mean, with, we were like within $500 of putting the deal together Yeah. and I've got to stick to my numbers. Yeah. And if my numbers are, you know, right there and it's over that I walk, you know, I can, yeah. I, I'll get a hundred deals until I get that one deal. And it, time, so. You know what, Gary? It's the same in the bigger playback, uh, in, the, in the bigger sandbox. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm playing at a larger sandbox now, you know, hundreds yep. of millions of dollars worth of real estate. But yeah. the cash on cash returns have to meet our buying criteria. You know, yeah. the, low, yep. the, the loan value, the, the capitalization rates, uh, yes. the internal rate of return that we give to an investor over a six year hold. I mean, all yep. of these numbers have to fit the model. Because as soon as you mm -hmm. deviate from a plan, you're, you're a liar, right? Yeah. You're a liar. Unless you see massive upside potential in there that exactly. somebody else hasn't seen. You know, yep. in, in my world today, it's all about hedging the downside and maximizing mm -hmm. the upside. How do you protect yeah. the downside? Because it's still real estate. Stuff happens. Mm -hmm. How do you protect the, yep. the, the downside for an investor? And how do you accelerate their upside? And, uh, yeah. you know... I remember teaching over the years and I would show deals that had 20. We were talking about that little deal in Gary, Indiana, right? But, yeah. you know, if you, if you said to somebody, I did a real estate transaction that had a 150% rate of return, they'd say yeah. you should go to jail right now, right? Yeah. But in real yep. estate, we control it. We can create, you know, the, these better returns than, than most other vehicles. Yeah. And, you know, with fund managers in, in the commercial real estate space, um, there is 100% transparency. So it's not like yeah. the stock market where you can, as a, as, a, uh, as a fund manager in the stock market, you can legally hide fees from your investors, which blows <laughs> yeah. you away, right? You know, yep. as fund, fund managers, it's, it's a transparent world. So, you know, everybody knows what everybody's doing. And that's, that's always exciting because now you're locking arms. You know, you win together. Yeah. That's the... That's the the, the, the yeah. you, you see me, man. I get animated, right? I, I get excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I well, love it. I love one, it. Of my, one of my specialties, Dave, is actually helping people raise money. Yeah, and so I, I become very good at that. And I got uh, one of my students right now. We're raising like five million dollars uh, for some apartment complexes and stuff. So right. I, you know, it does that. You know, I get more excited about that type of stuff than I do like the little, you know, single families and in nature. So yeah, yeah. Look, as uh, network is growing right now, right? And again, yeah. I don't mean to be corny, but the network correlates to net worth, right? Yeah. If everybody you're hanging around with is broke, there's a chance you're not going to make any money, right? So elevating yeah. the game. Um, part of part of some of the strategies that I've seen in the past is the ability to invest on what they call fund to fund basis. So one okay. fund can actually invest in another fund if that other fund has a has a better track record or has a a newer shinier yeah. strategy going on. Um, yeah. One of the things that we decided to do was to make our fund what's called a hybrid fund. So our mm -hmm. primary focus, like I said, is the Gulf Coast multifamily, you know, cash on yep. cash returns that meet our buying criteria, et cetera. But we also have the ability to allocate some of that capital for our fund over to hard money lending, debt fund, right? Yeah. So now yep. I can, you know, I could allocate 10, 20 million to an established mm -hmm. hard money lending company and say, okay, I, I'm now your warehouse line of credit. Yeah. So basically, I'm Wall Street now. Right. Yeah. What, what, That's amazing. What, isn't it? Right. What would it be like, right, for an investor instead of investing with Wall Street? Now the investor mm -hmm. is Wall Street. Yeah. Because that's kind of that's kind of the philosophy behind that. Instead of yeah. Wall Street buying these notes out, well, and yep. notes are all in house. 
we get yeah. all of the margins together. It's called spread. You know, if you yep. pay X amount of percentage in return to the investor with the money, well, then you lend yeah. it over here. There's a gap between the two. That's called the spread. That spread yep. doesn't come in just one time. It comes in every mm -hmm. single month. Yeah. So the yep. money goes to work instead of the investor going to work, right? There's yep. something about Absolutely. cash flow, right? Cash flow month after month. Cash flow through lending, cash flow through apartment houses, Mmm, yep. opportunities rife. Love it. Rife. Love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. So cool. Well, hey, uh, we're getting close to the end of the show here. Uh, let me, uh, I'm going to, I could put your website up here, I believe, on the screen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah look at that. We're, we're fancy over here. Yo, man. <laughs> Yo. So, obviously, I mean, you're looking for credit investors yourself and, you know, we don't sell stuff on the show, but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to promote you out there because you've got, you know, I checked out your, your company and, and went to your website and you're doing it the right way. Uh, you know, you're not, you know, I got, I teach people how to raise money, man. Like, so, um, you know, you're doing it the right way. You got your PPM set up. You, you know, the SEC rules and regulations yeah. Yeah. And, and you're yeah. doing it the right way. So here's if, the thing. If, here's, if, uh, uh, Here's the way I'd sum it up, and and, and I yeah. know you agree because I can tell just just by the way we're interacting with each other. Yeah. Raising capital isn't raising capital. Raising capital is building partnerships. That's yes. what it is. It's a partnership. You yep. rely on the capital infusion, one end of the partnership, and that relies on my skill sets to put that money to work. That's the other Absolutely. partnership. And yep. I I've turned away money in the past, brother. Money's everywhere. Yep. It really is. <laughs> It really is. Yeah. You know, if somebody calls and they say, hey, I got X amount of dollars, take my money. Well, let's make sure that your money is a good fit for me and I'm a good fit yep. for you, first of all. Uh, money yeah. is, is it's a commodity, right? So yeah. there are rules and regulations. Uh, anybody who's watching the show here, if they do go to that site, just drop in some information somewhere and, and somebody will reach out to you if you want to know more about what we do and how we do it. But you're absolutely yeah. right, Gary. You got to do it by the numbers, yeah. man. It's it's serious yep. when you're using other people's capital. You, you know, a follow the rules. Yeah, yep. yeah. Follow the rules. Appreciate so, you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, check out uh, freedomventures.com. And Dave, I appreciate it. Thanks again for being on the show. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Take care, man.